Hi, I'm going to try and show you how to access the armature in a Marklin locomotive with a DCM motor. This is what the five pole armature looks like. And it is hiding in the motor, which is right here. You can see the axle of the armature sticking out. To get to it, we're going to have to remove the truck off the locomotive. And typically on the bottom, there are two screws, one that holds the coupler and then the one in the center that is going to hold the truck. This particular locomotive has an extra little uh, connector that we have to pull loose first before we start removing the two screws that hold the truck and the coupler in place. As you can see, they both use flathead screwdrivers. So we'll remove the one that holds the truck frame in place first. And these things always seem to fall and then drop off the table into the carpet. And then we remove the screw that holds the coupler in place. Tap it out. Caught that one. And now we can remove the coupler. And next we're going to pull off the plastic truck frame. And as you can see, there is a metal tab. This is very typical for Martlin locomotives that is underneath the plastic or above, I should say, the plastic frame. And it sits like that. You can already see some excess oil down on the bottom of the truck. And that's an indication that um, your motor may be over oiled. We can now push the truck up through the frame and the only thing that's still in its way are the wires. But you get a better view of the motor plate here, the black almost square plate. It's typically held in place with those two screws, one on the bottom and one on the top. And then you see the brush holders, one on the left side and one on the right side. And if you look carefully, you can see the end of the brush in there. It's not very focused. And it gets held in place by that tiny little wire that you see. And that's a spring. I'm going to use this little hook tool. It makes it a little easier to undo the springs. First, I'm going to open this up ever so slightly. The little capacitor. It can bend. You have to be careful. But you can bend it open ever so slightly to take these wires away temporarily. And just fold them out of the way. And note you don't have to solder or unsolder anything if you do it this way. And then you can see the two springs that hold the brushes in place. I'm going to hook behind it right here. Oh, missed it. There you go. And I try to have it move on top of the plate, as you can see here. And I try to do the same on the other side. Up, clip it over. And now the two brushes can come out. They're no longer held in place by these arms, these spring arms. Let me tap, see if that brush slides out. Oh, there it is. And the other one may be a little more difficult. See if it wants to fall out. No, nope, it doesn't want to fall out. So we can worry about that later. So now what we're going to try to do is move the truck up a little bit higher. And it can come all the way out if you want it to. And then we're going to undo the two screws that hold the motor cover, the motor plate, in place. Again, use the flathead screwdriver. and simply undo the two screws. And then the plate should come off. It's a little fiddly to try to do it here, looking through the camera screen, but 
bear with me. Okay, so here we have the motor plate, the magnet, and the armature all coming out of the truck. So I'll put the truck away, and then you can pull the armature out of the magnet, or I'll pull the magnet and the armature off simultaneously. And the armature is what you need to take a close look at. You can see the black of the carbon brushes, and a good test to see if you have an issue is to simply spin the armature between your fingers. And if you would have a lot of black on your fingers at that point, you know that the armature is going to have a problem. The grooves that you see here on this armature are still nice and clean and clear. The grooves are still there. And so that's a good sign. That's what your armature should look like. If your armature looks like this, you're in trouble. This is an armature that needs cleaning. As you can see, these grooves are filled up with carbon residue. It's a mixture of oil and the fine powder, the fine uh, leftovers of the uh, brushes that will cause this to build up between the plates of the armature. And when that happens, the electricity can actually flow from one plate through that residue in that groove to the next plate, and it will cause a short circuit. And while we're looking at this armature, as you can see, there are one, two, three, four, five spools, and that's why this is called a five pole motor. Every spool is wired to its own little plate, and this is called a collector plate. This collector is in the style of a drum, and that's why they also call this a drum collector motor, a DCM motor. So this is a different armature that I have. It still looks pretty good, but these grooves already require cleaning as well. You can do this with maybe a business card and try to slide that through the grooves, or I use a dental cleaning tool here and kind of wipe these grooves clean. And if there's a lot of residue buildup, then you can use a pointy tool like I do here. And you can see how much is coming off on that first try. And you have to go through all the grooves and clean out the junk that has built up in it. There you go. So that's a mixture of uh, carbon and oil that becomes sticky and it actually conducts electricity, and that's what's causing your issues with the locomotive. So after you get all the grooves clean, then I would get a piece of cloth and wipe the collector plates clean as well. And if it is necessary, you may have to degrease them with maybe some rubbing alcohol or a non-aggressive uh, degreaser. The same for the truck. You can see here in the reflection, there's a lot of oil in places like up here where it shouldn't be. It's all, to me, it's over oil, too much oil in this truck. You need some oil on the gear and the moving parts, but that's it. Too much oil is not good. Then you inspect the cover plate, make sure there's not too much oil on it. And then in this case, we still have that brush stuck in one of the two sides. And since I want to inspect it, I'm going to push it out and try to take it out. And as you can probably see in the reflection, there's actually some oil on the brush. And that's not good. That's only causing this residue to build up even faster. So with my fat fingers, no go. Or the pointy tool, I'll try to slide it out and get that brush to fall out. And there it is. And so if these brushes have a lot of oil on them, you need to degrease these as well. If you look closely, these brushes have a little groove and that needs to go to the outside in the brush holder and it, the groove needs to point up and down so that that little spring arm can fit inside that groove. I need tweezers to put these brushes back in the brush holder and then push them in place. 
And then I use my pointy tool to get that spring and place it back in the groove. And then you need to make sure that the spring is in the groove and that brush is pushed against the collector plate. And then we're going to do the same on the other side. I'm grabbing the brush with my tweezers. Slide it in position. Push it in. I should have pushed it in a little further than that, but then I get the spring. And here the spring is not in position very well. It's actually leaning on top of the brush. So I need to cautiously push the brush in even further. And there it goes. And now I can make sure that the spring falls on top of the brush. There. Yep, that looks good. And then now we can reassemble the locomotive. So we're going to place the truck back in the locomotive frame from above, opposite of the way that we took it out. And now we get the little metal plate. And then we grab the plastic frame. And place the frame on top of the metal plate. It should be a very light click. And then we can screw that cover plate back on. That little arm needs to go into that hole and it clips back in with a nice firm push. And now we need to mount the coupler back on. Make sure you don't mount it upside down. And get the flathead screw for it. Put it in place and tighten it. It doesn't look like that arm is pushed in all the way, so I'm pushing a little harder there. Now it's seated well. Now we can flip the locomotive over, and all we have to do now is put the wires back under the capacitor, and this is done just so that these wires are not all over the place. It just keeps them nice in place. And we are done. Now you know how to disassemble and reassemble a DCM motor and how to clean its collector plate. Hopefully you found it useful and if you did please give us a thumbs up. See you next time.